Hey, how's it going guys? This is George from MyNaturalHerniaCure.com and uh, I just I get a lot of questions from people looking for advice on uh, what the best ways to manage their hernia is. Uh, a lot of people are frustrated, can't figure out what they want to do or, or, or how to even go about doing it. Um, you know, once you end up with a hernia, a lot of times it gets so bad that as soon as you stand up, you get out of bed in the morning, you stand up for five, ten minutes and it starts bothering, you start feeling pressure, some people feel, start feeling pain. Um, a lot of other stuff like that. So I wanted to put this video together real quick just to kind of put out there the, the five best things to do to manage your hernia without getting surgery. Um, this is what I do every day, um, how I manage mine, how I've made this line. It's been over four years since I've had mine. And um, you know, right now I'm at the point where it, it barely bothers me. I rarely ever see it or feel it. So uh, totally manageable, no problem at all. Um, so number one, most important thing, no matter what you do, the first thing you need to do is you need to get a hernia belt that fits you and that's comfortable enough for you to wear all day without having to really think about it too much. And I know some, if you've been following me for a little while, you know I developed my own hernia belt that by the time you watch this video, it might be for sale, it might not be. But either way, I'm not saying you have to buy mine, but you have to buy one, you have to find one that fits you and your lifestyle and make sure that you could wear it from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, only taking it off to take a shower. It's the most important thing. Keep the hernia pushed in. As long as it's you know, inside the, the, the abdomen, um, that's the important thing. And for me, this was that's the whole reason why I developed my own hernia belt was because it was impossible for me to find. I went through every one of them that I could find without being able to find one that I could wear every day, all day you know, in and out of the water, doing stuff and, and be comfortable enough in it to actually keep it on. A lot of them I would have to take off after an hour because they were just so uncomfortable, it was ridiculous. The pads on the hernia belts, a lot of times they have a, a, um, a convex pad that curves into the hernia and actually it, it's designed to like push into the hole and it gets really uncomfortable and it irritates the, the, where the, the hole is in the hernia and it just wasn't good. So I needed something with a flat pad, something that could move with my body no matter what I was doing, uh, sports wise, surfing, whatever I wanted to do. So that's the most important thing, get a good hernia belt. Um, number two would be when you're either pooping, sneezing, coughing, playing the trumpet, um, Anything where you're where you're bearing down like that, hold the hernia with your hand, even if you have a hernia belt on. You always want to hold it. I even when like when I'm sitting on the toilet, I actually hold both sides like this, so that I don't end up with a hernia on the other side from pooping because I know too many people that end up getting hernias while they're actually on the toilet. Um, and this it kind of goes it goes into the next one, which is number three about food, but um, just make sure that you're eating easily digestible food so that you're not constipated. But even if you aren't constipated, like I, I'm, I'm never constipated, but I still always hold it while I'm pooping. Um, when I'm sneezing, when I'm coughing, it's just a habit for me just to kind of just put a little bit of extra pressure on it just to make sure that nothing's popping out of place. That's number two. Um, number three would be to stay away from foods that inflame your intestines which is, um, for me, like gluten is inflama inflames the intestines. Uh, sugar is inflammatory, so I stay away from sugar. Um, that's pretty much it. And then anything that makes you gassy or bloated. So, you know, the inter-abdominal pressure is gonna, is gonna find a way to push out. You know, your intestines gets inflamed. It's gonna find some place to try and push all that inflammation so that hole is there it's going to want to push through the hole worse and worse you know the worse your hernia gets so try and definitely stay away from in you know any food that inflames your intestines um i, st I try and stay away from meat as well because meat actually it just takes a long time for meat to work its way through the intestines where like vegetables and things like that pasta you know all that stuff goes through Within one day, that stuff's gone. Where when you eat meat, it's actually got to, you know, basically rot away inside your intestines, and it just takes so long to get through that it actually ends up causing gas and, and bloating. So I stay away from meat. I stay away from meat, gluten, and sugar. All three of those. Um, 
and that that works for me like not, you know whatever works for you just try and keep your diet to where it doesn't inflame your intestines um, number four would be to walk lightly on your feet so back in the day I, I call it uh, Indian walking you know I don't know I but we used to call it that when I was a little kid like when we were running around the woods we were like trying to hunt animals or whatever we were doing um, you know that like you see pictures of the old Indians and they would walk kind of like on their toes it would be like kind of toe heel toe heel to be quiet as they're walking through the woods um, so I kind of that I kind of just do that just to keep the pressure from you know these days now that you know everybody wears comfortable shoes and stuff like that when you walk you're actually slamming your heel down slamming your heel down slamming your heel down and as you every time you do that when you slam your heel down you're just kind of bouncing your organs boom 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 and everything's bouncing down right into that hole where the hernia is so if you walk light on your feet that takes away that hammering all day long or how for however long you're walking around it takes that hammering away where it's not pushing it down into the hole so I for me I'm lucky I get to work at home uh, I don't have to go out to a job and you know wear any certain clothes so I'm barefoot 98% uh, of the time um, like when I go out I walk the dog I live real close to the beach so I, you know I'm always walking down to the beach I take the dog out I'm barefoot all the time um, walking around the house I, I the only time I ever put on shoes is when I'm going out somewhere, you know, going to dinner or going to the store, something like that. I'll put some shoes on. And even then, I try to wear shoes like Vans or like Converse, something with a flat sole where it's not, you know, these air cushion soles that are super comfortable. So you, so you can actually feel when you're, when you're starting to slam your heels down, it kind of reminds you to, to kind of walk light on your feet. Um, and number five would be to do some sort of exercise regimen to strengthen your inner and outer obliques and the transverse abs. And I have a couple of other videos where that breaks down the, the routine that I do um, for my abs. And then also there's a couple of yoga breathing exercises that help really good. I think that was that's one of the main things that does it is the transverse abs kind of go right through the inguinal canal and they act, they're actually the muscles that are are right around the hole where the hernia wants to come through and the only way to really hit those muscles is by breathing exercises when you do an ad vacuum you breathe out all the you you breathe in may push your stomach out and then you breathe out suck your stomach in and then put you want to pull everything up towards your ribs and that motion right there is strengthening the transverse abs which is right there by the by the hole of the hernia that's how I've seen the most progress in my hernia is by, I, I think it's from doing that. Well, it's from the combination of doing all these things, but I think that that, that ab vacuum and breathing exercise and things like that are really important. So those are the five most important things. If I could tell you that if you wanna manage your hernia without surgery, these are the five things that I would do no matter what. Um, a couple of, couple of bonuses. I would say when you're on the toilet, the natural position for you to be in when you poop is a squatting position. Think about, you know, like cavemen when they were walking around in the woods or whatever, they would just squat down. They would have to get into a deep squat position and poop. That's, an, it's, it's your back straight, all your organs are straight. It's, a, it's, the, it's the best position to be in for everything to flow. So when you're on the toilet, try to get in as close as a position as you can to a deep squat. Even like sometimes I'll even stand up on the toilet. This sounds dumb, but I'll actually stand up on the toilet seat and, and squat down over the toilet and do it that way. But even if you just sit on the toilet and like get a stool or something to put in front of the toilet so you can lift your feet or even if you just get up on your, you know, lift your knees up so where you're on your toes and not down on your heels. Uh, that even helps just as long as you can get your knees up and try to get yourself into a squatting position. It really helps um, And the next thing the next thing I would say is Don't stop Trying to figure out how to manage it if these five things if you could do these five things and You feel like oh man, this is actually okay. I can deal with this then keep rolling with it 
But if it doesn't, if there's something else that you need to add or you know have to put in there to make sure that you can manage it throughout the day, then don't stop until you figure it out. Because once you figure it out, you kind of free yourself again. Like where I felt like for a long time I was being almost like held captive by my hernia. It was all I could think about. It was bothering me constantly. It was constant for but like like point of stress for me because. I couldn't do what I wanted to do anymore. Like everything, uh, I'm an active guy. I want to go surf, I want to go run, I want to go work out, I want to go, you know, ride a bike, ride dirt bike, whatever I want to do. And all of a sudden now I have to think, oh man, am I gonna be able to do that because of this stupid hernia? So don't give up. You'll eventually figure out what works for you. Just keep going until you figure it out. It's totally worth it in the end. Because like I said right now, I can totally manage it. I can do whatever I want to do. Keeping these other things in mind, like when I sneeze, I just made it a habit just to put my hand on it. I just do it. So, but other than that, little little stuff like that, I could pretty much manage it and, and be fine. So that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up here. Hit me up um, on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Check out my website, mynaturalherniacure.com. And uh, you can hit me up there, ask me questions. Let's all keep in touch, try and uh, you know, share as much information as we can. There's a lot of us out there that, that are trying to manage these things without surgery, so uh, let's keep it going. All right, guys, take it easy.